In our college or universities, whenever we are introduced to line integrals, we are always shown this scary-looking formula, and then simply given some functions and curves to solve as numerical problems, without really understanding why we are doing it. However, as you may already know, I prefer a different approach. I truly enjoy visualizing concepts first and then exploring them in depth. I believe that understanding the why behind mathematical ideas makes learning not only easier, but also much more enjoyable. So, now let us start. What we will do is try to understand this formula, what it actually means, using a real-life example. Let's begin with something simple. Imagine you have a thin wire lying along a curved path, say a quarter circle or radius three meters. Suppose this wire has a constant density everywhere, meaning every small piece of the wire has the same amount of mass per unit length and assume this density is two kilograms per meter of the wire. So if I plot a density surface in 3D, where these are the X and Y axes and the Z axis represents the value of the density. Like you can see, the value of Z is two everywhere, which means the density is constant for all X and Y values. In this case, calculating the total mass of the wire is easy. If we know the total length of the wire and its density, we just multiply them together. Mass equals density times length of the wire. Using this orange region, you can see how our mass distribution is spread along the curve. The orange ribbon visually represents how each small segment of the wire contributes to the total mass. The height of the orange ribbon is the same everywhere because it shows the density value of this wire. Now L equals the length or the perimeter of the quarter circle, pi r over 2, or pi times 3 over 2 because the radius of this quarter circle is 3 meters. So the mass will be 2 times 3 pi over 2 or 3 pi kilograms. This is just like finding the mass of a straight rod. Nothing complicated yet. But now, let's make things more interesting. Let's say the density is not constant. Instead, the density of the wire depends on where it is placed in space. For example, think about a wire absorbing a coating, where the coating is thicker in some places and thinner in others. In such cases, the mass per unit length changes along the wire's path. This means we can't just multiply total length by a single density value anymore. To make this concrete, let's take an example where density varies linearly along the x-axis as 2 plus 0.5 times x, and we represent this density as a function of both x and y, but for this specific case, it is not varying with y. This means that at x equals 0, the density is 2, and as x increases, the density increases as well. Look at this density surface in 3D. You can see how the density is increasing with x. Look here. When the x is 0 and we vary along y, the z value or the density is constant at 2 and at, say, x equals 3, and we vary along y, Z value is 3.5, which means density is 3.5 there. Now, if I place our wire on this density surface along the curve, which is a quarter circle, the wire will look something like this. Now, what do you think these orange vertical lines will represent? Yes, right. They are the density values of the wire at a point on the curve. So at this point on the curve, the density is this, and at this point, it is this. And this is how our mass distribution will look like, this orange ribbon. So this means our mass will be more here, and it will be less here. Now, if we want to calculate the mass of this wire, what should we do? Yeah, bring in integration to the picture. You know, when we want to find an area under the curve, we simply integrate by breaking it into smaller parts and then add them up. So, assume we have this small region where the wire has a tiny segment, a small length ds. I have shown an exaggerated region for visualization purposes, but assume this segment is super duper tiny. This segment is so tiny 
that we can assume its density is approximately constant within it. Now, what does that mean? It means that for this one small piece of wire, we can simply multiply the density at that point by the small length ds to get the tiny mass contribution, which we will call as dm. This is just the density of the wire at that point x, y. Now, what's next? Well, we just do this for every tiny piece along the entire curve. This means summing up all the small mass pieces to get the total mass m as integral of this. For our linear density case, this row of x, y is 2 plus 0.5 times x. And that's it. That's the meaning of the line integral for mass. It's just adding up all these small mass contributions along the curved path or the wire placed on the varying density surface. That is what line integral is all about. But wait, now you might ask, what exactly is ds? Good question. ds is the length of this small piece of the wire along the curve, or the length of this black arc on this curve. And how do we compute it? Look carefully. When this arc is very small, we can simply approximate it as a straight line, right? Now, because the wire is curved, we need to account for both x and y changes. So let this be dx change and this be dy change. So, using Pythagoras' theorem, we get ds equals square root of dx squared plus dy squared. Now, here comes the magic. I want to eliminate two variables and bring just one variable into the picture, say, t. This is called parametrization of the curve. Inside this square root, multiply and divide by dt square like this. Now separate this dt square of the denominator like this. Then bring this dt outside the square root to get ds as dt times square root of this. So if we can somehow represent x as a function of t and y as some other function of t, then we can find dx by dt and dy by dt and solve this integration easily. Now, in our case, since our curve is a quarter circle, so if we take t as this angle, then x becomes 3 cos t and y becomes 3 times sine of t, where our t goes from 0 to 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. Also, our density will become 2 plus 0.5 times, x will become 3 cos t, or it will be 2 plus 1.5 times cos t. Also, dx over dt will be negative 3 times sine of t, and dy over dt will be 3 times cos of t. Now, let's substitute these into our equation for ds. Substituting the values, we get this, which on expanding becomes this. Now, we know from the trigonometric identity that sine squared of t plus cos squared of t is always equal to 1. So, replacing that in our expression, we get the square root of 9 times 1, which simplifies to 3. So, ds is just 3 times dt. By the way, this is just for some fun. If you integrate this ds, we get the length of this quarter circle. So, integrate 3 dt from 0 to pi over 2, to get 3 pi over 2, which is nothing but the perimeter of this quarter circle. Amazing! Now, let's substitute everything into our line integral. Solving this integral will give us the total mass of the wire along the curved path, which turns out to be 3 pi plus 4.5 or 13.92 kilograms. Wow! That was super noise! Now finally, let us visualize the same for nonlinear density. Suppose our density is this scary looking. Its surface plot will be like this. Now, if we place the wire along the same path or the quarter circle on this surface, it will look something like this. You might say this does not look like quarter circle, but this is because the surface itself is curved and varies in height, which distorts our perception of the wire's shape. And again, this orange ribbon will show the mass distribution something like this. Now, if we want to calculate this mass, first we will parametrize the curve like this, 
then also find the density as function of t, which will be this, then the ds will be same as before, or equal to 3 dt, and thus the mass of the wire place along quarter circle in this non-linear density is this line integral, which becomes like this in the end. Now please don't ask me to solve this integral. We can compute it numerically to get the mass as 22.73 kilograms. That was super fun, isn't it? If this video gets 20,000 likes, then I will make another banger video like this one. If you enjoy my videos and want to support my channel, consider becoming a Patreon as it helps me create more awesome content for you. Link is in the description. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.